in my shows Everybody put their hands up like a smart kid in chemistry class God damn it's too easy I ain't stopping no other option presented Authentic with all these writings though really this shit is simple Too easy I'ma go on tour every show is doing numbers Cause futuristic is popping like a pimp Too easy I'ma take the girl with all them curves who got the smile on her face Sex in it with oh, the too easy What's going on Silverbacks? It's Adam and Phil here again uh, got another podcast episode Dos Dos uh, Two um, we're with Jason this time, uh, another one of our sponsored athletes, and uh, we asked him a bunch of questions about lifting, his time in the Marine Corps, kind of what he does for fun. Uh, so stay tuned and uh, hope you enjoy it. How's your weekend been? Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get any training in? Uh, yeah, I bent a little bit yesterday. Um, tried to. I think I went a little brave. I guess I had some energy yesterday, so I max out. Missed my 390 by like that much. Ah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, I know that feeling. How you guys doing? Good, man. Yeah, I just I think we benched yesterday too, and or sorry, squatted yesterday, and then just taking today off. So yeah, it's, um, looking forward to a few rest days now. But uh, yeah, yeah. Um, got a meet coming up next week, so we're just going to be resting pretty much all week, so it's going to be pretty easy for us. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you have planned for the rest of the week as far as your training goes? It sounds like you're feeling a bit better with the squats and stuff. Uh, see, squats, I thought it was, and then I started looking at the deck. I'm like, I'm not happy with it. You know, I'd rather be like another inch below parallel to make sure it's definitive. Yeah. My last meet, I actually got um, flagged, I think, all three attempts for, for depth. Oh, wow, so, yeah. I, I don't want to make sure it's, you know, definitive every time I get down in that hole, you know, make sure my hips are below. So I actually just ordered a pair of Adidas um, uh, power shoes. Nice. So, like the, the old school ones. So yeah. Kind of help, hopefully it'll help uh, get me down in the hole a little better. That's awesome, but, man. Yeah, I think uh, mobility is one of those things that, uh, especially for squat depth, it's, it's one of those things that, if you, uh, I know personally, if you don't keep up with it all the time, then it can catch up to you, you know? Yeah, man. I know exactly how that feels. <laughs> how many meets have you competed in before? Is it just that uh, one? Three. Or three? Oh, nice. Yeah, so, um, my last meet was May of last year, of 2015. And, uh, it didn't do so well. I think I got four to nine altogether, so... Kind of disappointed with that. It was just, it was a odd set of circumstances that happened. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I never lived in an afternoon before, so I've always been a morning lifter. Oh, yeah. So that threw me off, I think. Um, and then the warm up area was very small. It was making like this tiny CrossFit gym. So and there was probably, it had to be at least 40 lifters <laughs> in a tiny little area to wow. warm up at the same time. So it was, uh, it was a little nuts, but, uh, the federations, they're good, they're solid, they're, uh, they're, they're quick, they run their meets very well, you know, so I stick with them because of that, but uh, That's cool. change that a little bit. But, uh, How were the previous two before that? Um, PRs pre every time. Oh, um, nice, hit, yeah. So, but those were both morning lifts, so <clears throat> well, I don't use that excuse. I know I should be lifting, you know, whenever they tell me to lift, but um, I got to, those, those were actually a lot better. Uh, my first meet, obviously, you know, the PR every time um, when you get on there. But the second one was uh, probably a 30-pound 30, 30 PR for squat. Wow. Um, bench has always been a problem for me. Um, I think I, as as being an average guy, I have really short legs, so I can't get my, my feet down. Yeah, yeah. Me too. <laughs> but then uh, deadlift, I think, went up another uh, maybe 30 pounds there, too. But then when I got to that third meet uh, last May, it just everything just fell apart for me. And it actually was a good thing because it, it kind of teaches you how to deal with kind of the quicksand effect. Yeah. Uh, how everything just kind of uh, unravels real quick and just falls apart, and you know try to get your mind in that. I didn't I didn't know how to deal with that, so I think my mind unraveled too quickly, so I couldn't right. bounce back from it too properly. Um, but it, it's a, it was a, it was a learning experience and. You know, I did injure myself at the meet, though, um, so I had to take off the okay. second half of the year. And, yep. um, so I'm planning again another main meet this this year, and awesome. hopefully we can kick some ass. That's great. What uh, what kind of goals do you have for the meet then? My goals right now, um, I was aiming for a 625 squat um, at the at the meet in May. I mm -hmm. 
wasting. So I opened with 585, got flagged for one light on depth. So I'm aiming for 625 this time around. I did change my form, so I had to kind of test myself to see if I can still hold on to that, that 625 goal. My bench, I want my 400. I want that 400. Yeah, man. I want that 405. Um, and then my, my poles, I'm looking for about 605 on poles. Um, nice, dude. Yeah, this will be about 25 pounds per hour on a deadlift, but that's my goal. I want to break in the 1600s, and then hopefully be like a high 1600 by the end of the year with another meet. That's huge. That's great. Yeah. yeah. What's your kind of strategy for meets? Do you try and do one once a year or once every six months or just when there's someone around? I try to do at least two a year. Um, that gives you, you know, a good solid training. Um, I try to train, I've been training about 16 weeks out for a meet and then I realized how old I was. So I started backing down a little bit. Um, I go down, I'm just, this next time around, I'm do about 12 weeks for the, the full training and just knock it down a little bit. Um, I was trying to do multiple meets last year. Um, I was aiming for about three. I wanted to. I do mostly um, RPS as my federation. Right. Okay. So I'm just trying to break in the USPA as well, and that's in, in May. I injured myself, so I had to back out of the USPA one as well. But um, I can try. I'm going to try to aim for at least three this year, uh, just to see if I can pull it off. Nice. Uh, so I figure, you know, being almost 35, I'm going to catch up to the young bucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's uh, do you have kind of like a strategy down pat now for how you prepare for the meet? Um, What's that look like? I do um, I do a little bit of um, initially no. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I follow uh, I follow a gentleman. His name is Brian Schwab. He runs uh, Orlando Barbell. Okay. Um, solid lifter. He's been doing it for twenty plus years. Has like twenty five world records. Wow. Um, <clears> he's <throat> like one sixty five and. He's just, he's just a monster that yeah, yeah. <laughs> weight class. But he uh, came up with this program called Minimalist Method or M2 Method. And it kind of focuses on uh, getting to the point of your workout as quick as possible. Oh, okay. A lot of people preach volume, volume, volume. This guy is the exact opposite. He does, you know, his his first week will be five reps, and that's you just go down from there. You're not doing anything six to eight, um, oh, okay. especially with a, an old body like my uh, myself. <laughs> Plus, then he focuses on um, a lot of uh, block work, so okay. high poles, you know, squatting the high boxes. And I used his program the, my second and third meet, and I would right. just know the games like right off the bat. And then a lot of that nice. that um, sticky point work is what helped you know get through and get up um, you know over six hundred squats. And, you know, I was, I was aiming for that deadlift. I think I work on that form, man. <laughs> it's like it's so, hard, man. Yeah. But uh, I follow him mostly. I started trying to do my own thing, and I realized, you know, hitting those full depth and full range of motion wasn't working out for me so much. So I was kind of wearing me down. Yeah. Um, so kind of focus. I'm not going to go back to him, to his method. Um, I think I actually start training in about two weeks. There's there should be a mate come out the uh, first or second week of May once I nail down that date. But cool. I'll, I'll let you guys know when that is. Yeah, yeah for sure. sure. Yeah. So what kind of uh, what kind of setbacks have you had? I know you mentioned you've had some injuries and stuff, and so how did you get through that? I mean, for a lot of people, I think that could be that could be pretty discouraging and you know pretty pretty bad for people's progress. So how how did you move past that? Um, it's mostly stubbornness. I guess it would be the easiest <laughs> way to put it. Um, I'm, I'm the type of person that if I can find a way to work around a problem, I'll do it. Which you know. For most, a lot of lifters and a lot of the, the guys that have been doing it for you know, decades, they, it's probably not the best way to do it. But, um, for example, um, the last meet I did, I strained my right knee. Um, one of the ligaments in my knee doing my last deadlift attempt. And so I kind of try to just back off from doing deadlift. I try to let it yeah. feel. Um, maybe just kept closer to – actually, I changed my form. I went back. I went to a conventional form to kind of take the pressure off my knee. I trained that oh, okay. way for four months. But I figure at least if I don't stick with conventional, at least I'll have a bigger, stronger back because of it. Yep. So, um, and then a week after I strained my knee, I actually um, strained my left shoulder as well doing bench press. Damn. Uh, yeah, so I'm just like <laughs> – But uh, with that one, 
I kind of I stick with the, the block work again. I kind of just did a lot of mobility work, um, kind of just strengthened it out. Talked to a couple people who you know were bigger benches than me, and you know they've been doing it for you know decades themselves and seeing what they did. Some stretching exercises, make sure I warmed it up um, a lot more proficiently than I was doing before, nice. and just kept going and kept kept pushing. Um, and I think that with you know finding ways to adapt around a problem and then knowing your limitations on top of that, like I can, I'll tell you when I get on a bench, I can I know that um, I don't have a lot of time to do a whole lot of reps because you know my shoulders will start breaking down. Right. Um, and I just have to get in there, you know, hit what I can, um, and then kind of just do a lot more accessory work, you know, whether it's right. presses or dumbbell presses or, you know, tricep work and stuff like that. Cool. The, the deadlifts were the same way. Um, I got to just kind of, like, let my knee heal. You know, I went back to conventional. Um, I thought I was actually going to stick with conventional for a while, and then I realized uh, it's not the, the most best form for me. I mean, right. I didn't feel like I was pulling as hard or had the same – um, tightness doing conventional right. and I didn't do sumo so I eventually went back I do feel in my knee every once in a while you know um, so that's kind of thing I just have to work I have to know if if I feel that pull I have yeah. to judge myself and, and you know kind of just stop and be like you know what live the fight another day kind of deal yeah yeah definitely makes sense um, kind of going like all the way back to when you when did you like first start lifting um Okay, so like why um, kind of thing? I was thinking I first started about two years ago. It was actually literally January first, twenty fourteen. That's when I started. I woke up. Oh, and nice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a powerlifter this year. <laughs> <laughs> I just went forward with it. Yeah, sweet. I actually started lifting when I was fifteen, um, way back in the day. So uh, twenty years ago. Um, <laughs> so mom dropped me off with the YMCA and nothing else better to do. So I just learned how to start lifting. I've been doing it all through high school. Um, went to Marine Corps a little bit, had to change my, my focus a little bit because there are a lot more calisthenics and you know right. running and stuff like that. Um, got out of the core, kind of just uh, dicked around with it for a little bit, and then got into uh, bodybuilding when I was about 27. Oh, wow, cool. Uh, did that for about two and a half years, and that was, um, that was a different experience. Um, different training style. Um, it was cool seeing veins. It was cool seeing like striations, but you can only squat like 135 pounds because you're completely depleted. It's kind of like, well, you're a giant pussy, but yeah. <laughs> but um, so yeah, and then I kind of just dropped off of that, and then picked up powerlifting, you know, two years ago, and stuck in. And this is what I should have been doing when I was in New Jersey, trying to pick up chicks and yeah, yeah. <laughs> as possible. But uh, so this is what I should have been doing. And, that, that's what's one of my regrets is actually not starting this a whole lot sooner. So. Right. Yeah. How did you find? Like, how did you learn about bodybuilding as far as like the dieting and the training and stuff? Was that all your own research? Did you have friends doing that? So my first uh, show was um, I I, had, I got kind of convinced by a guy who ended up being a giant tool bag, but I actually yeah. ended up taking his advice and his training and paying him, and he. I think it was about 16 weeks I started. I took his advice and took his diet. And his diet was what he gave to like figure women. So I was mm-hmm. eating like 1,700 calories a day. Oh shit! Sure. Yeah. So completely depleted, and uh, I started asking around. Um, it's in Jersey, bodybuilding is just it's you know everywhere. So yeah. just started asking other people and see what they said. And I started taking their advice and reading my diet. Um, and after my first show, I dropped him, and I did the next three shows on my own. Oh, nice. Uh, and I just kind of kind of just went with it and researched and found it work and tested it. Um, I'm kind of the guy that just, like, flies by the seat of his pants. Like, powerlifting's the same way. I don't live yeah. in the powerlifting gym. I live on a military base. Oh, okay. So the people I can actually get to and talk to are even more limited than a commercial gym. Right. So a lot of the stuff I do, I look on. YouTube, I look on Instagram, I, I look on like Elite FTS and websites like that, and I kind of just research and see what they said about it, and if it works for me, then I'll try it, and if it doesn't, I scratch it, and I find something else. Cool. Um, like a lot of programs, I tried um, a lot of different programs before I got to Minimalist Method, right. um, but a lot of them were just all volume, and I know my body couldn't take it, you know, um, so it's just kind of, it's a learning thing for me. You know, I'm only yeah. two years in, so I still got to kind of figure out a little bit what works for 
sports for me the best. For sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely powerlifting. I think is one of those sports or one of those uh, one of those things where it just takes time. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of patience to figure out what works for you because uh, I don't think anyone steps into the gym the first time and figures out their perfect form for squat, bench, and deadlift, right? Like it takes, sometimes it takes years. And if you change weight classes, that can affect how you, uh, how you lift as well. So, and it's good to have, good to see that, or, you know, it's good to have that kind of realization that you need that patience. You need to kind of uh, be willing to, to make changes as you go along. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, and going and and just day by day and lift by lift and trying to get that you know that, that perfect form every single time. I think that what they say it takes um, a thousand reps for muscle memory to change. So yeah. every time I find something new, I'm like, okay, damn, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you're absolutely right, man. Yeah. What kind of training did you do in the Marine Corps? Um, I did everything opposite the powerlifting. <laughs> lots of lots of reps, lots of uh, calisthenics. I mean, I I don't want to say I was always in trouble, but I mean, <laughs> there was a lot of times where I didn't realize how many push-ups I was doing. So you know, I was actually on the, I couldn't move anymore. But um, it was a lot of making sure your body was in shape. You know, being staying active. Um, mostly body weight work, calisthenics. Um, shit ton of running i can oh, tell yeah. you i hate running like, yeah like it's like the dumbest thing to me yeah a lot of running a lot of hiking um just a lot of being like physical um i actually went through their marine corps martial arts program and i thought that, that was four weeks was actually tougher than boot camp it just wow. body hardening and, and being up and it was probably like november so we're outside in like t-shirts and it was just Jeez. freezing and you're still banging each other in full arms and inside your legs, kind of dead in nerves. I'm like, Oof. maybe I shouldn't have done this. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was fun. Um, it was definitely an experience. Um, but that's kind of stuff that we did, kind of stuff that they make basically kind of train as if, you know, if you were you know, going in, in into, you know, a crowded city, you have to be, you know, on your game and, and right. learn how to uh, uh, stay on point. I did a lot of more uh, troop transport, so I wasn't really on the, the boots on the ground. But I, you know, we got the guys there. We did a lot of training, um, going from like baby ships and sitting in the ocean waves and wow. getting completely soaked and um, getting to the beach and dropping these guys off and you know sure. doing uh, maneuvers and it was actually it's actually fun when you actually use it, but it's so it's so often that you don't like I, I wanted to train like every month, but then. In order to train, you got to make sure the vehicle's on, on point, and it's just, it's it's long, it's, but it was it's definitely rewarding. I look back on it, I smile. Yeah. It, it's, it sucked a lot of days, but it, it was definitely worth it. Yeah, to know you got through it, I'm sure, is a big accomplishment. Builds a lot of mental toughness and character to be able to go through all that. It must be crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, cra- crazy is what you do when you get in, and then you become unstable once you're actually in. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So, what kind of uh, what's your I guess lifestyle like then, Jay? Like, what kind of uh, what kind of things are you doing uh, other than lifting? Like, so I mean, a lot of people I think we wish we just could lift and that's it, but unfortunately, that's not how things work. <laughs> Dude, I, there were days where I was like, I look good enough to be a fitness model. Why can't I just get paid? <laughs> I actually do multiple things. I, I I have to work. I work on a military base. Um, so I do that majority of my week. Um, after that, it's hanging with the family. I got two kids and a wife. So um, my wife's very understanding of what I do now. She she hated the bodybuilding because I was always in the gym. Yeah. And you know, power lifting, you get in and out within an hour, hour and a half. And nice. It's a little yeah. bit easier. You know, you don't have to be there all the time. Um, I spend a lot of time either with homework <laughs> or um, watching movies. I love movies, dude. I love <laughs> just sitting on the couch and just vegging out and just being like involved in the movie. But um, powerlifting and then movies and then I watch a lot of I watch football when it's on. I'm very into football. I, I follow the Forty ers with everything I have. So um, I hope Chip, I, Chip Kelly 
sees this, I hope the guy this, this team turn around. And yeah. <laughs> um, that's kind of what I do. I'm, I'm not a big party guy. I don't really go out and uh, try to get drunk and, and try to do stupid stuff. And you know, I, I did that in my Marine Corps days, and you know, now it's time to actually be an adult and settle down. <laughs> also trying to start my own business um, in uh, real estate investments. Oh, so awesome. I'm working on that, writing business plans and you know, getting uh, all the necessary forms in to get that started. But um, essentially, I do want to own and, and run my own business and by the time I'm 40, just be working for myself until I wake up. And, That's and awesome. Yeah. Up, so, yeah. That sounds like a great goal. Yeah. Yeah. What about uh, what about your diet and nutrition right now? I mean, I know you've got you said you wanted to do a meet in May. So, uh, do you plan on doing anything uh, special or different than what you're doing right now for for that? My diet is um, kind of a joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, all right. So I started. I actually tried so many different diets, um, especially with bodybuilding. I thought I can actually translate it over to powerlifting. I found that to be absolutely incorrect. So I've done everything from high protein to high carbs to high fat to any combination of three. What I do now, I do intermittent fasting. Um, it's kind of, it was, it's not exactly overly popular. It's, uh, I know Ronda Rousey used to do it for her, her fights, but essentially what I do is I eat eight hours out of the day and then fast the other 16. Mm-hmm. Um, so it kind of helps me kind of just keep my, my eating under control because I know that if I start at 12, then I have to be done by 8 o'clock or you know, right. I'll punch myself. But, um, but in that time frame, eight, eight hour time frame, I kind of just eat um, what I feel is convenient more than anything else. Yeah. Um, I compete in the 275 class, and I'm right now sitting about 268, 269. So my focus was when I went in my first powerlifting meet was not worry about your weight. And that's what everybody told me was not worry about your weight, compete where you compete. So I actually did my first meet at 240. Um, nice. and a half so I got the 242 class and then after that I just started eating and eating and eating and then eventually got up and just stayed with the 275 class and I think I'm just a little more comfortable being there instead of you know trying to strain myself to get down to a weight class yeah. um, I think that's kind of more important especially for the beginning people and um, there's actually a, a buddy of mine I'm trying to convince to get into powerlifting so I'm having him tag along but he was always concerned about he's, he's dropped like 30 pounds already and wants to get down like another 20 I'm like if you want to compete just eat normally and eat yeah. you know compete where you compete you know, don't worry about the weight you know if you're not um, your first meet you're not going to be trying to be a professional or, or go out there and you know kick everybody's ass you just want to see how it is you know understand the speed of the meet and, and, and get that focus down but um topic um what i eat uh mostly is anything that's convenient to me um i have uh, i eat a lot of pasta uh i think there's a lot it's a lot of calories um i barilla makes this protein plus pasta which i just found like a month ago i thought it was the best thing in the world so i'm eating carbs and i'm eating protein like <laughs> that so um i do that um and anything that's kind of just just easy to make uh i used to spend hours on some days with meal prepping and, and counting calories and, and macros and you know making sure my chicken was exactly eight and a half ounces if it's eight point six I gotta slice that little edge off. Wow, and yeah. I did that for so long and I think I've been through like three food calculator or scales and uh, I kinda just let that go and I kinda would just focus on staying within about three thousand to four thousand calories. So on training days I do four thousand and then three thousand for the off training days and I kind of just keep everything the same. I know I should probably like you know, drop my carbs on certain days and high higher fats and stuff like that. And just, eh, you know, yeah. <laughs> so I'm kind of just focused on you know just being strong and, and feeding myself that way. That's the best part about powerlifting, I think, is that we can eat pretty much whatever we want and not have to worry too much, you know. So, um, what kind of are you doing? Any supplements like protein powders or creatine or anything? Yeah, I do. Uh, I do creatine. Um, I do micronized creatine, so I try to get best bang yeah. for your buck. So, and then uh, branch chains. I do about 15 grams of branch chains a day. About five grams of creatine. Uh, I take a multivitamin. I, and I don't do coffee. I don't like the taste of coffee, so I do caffeine pills. Nice. Yeah. So that's all. Yeah, that's all I do for my pre-workout is just straight caffeine pill. 
Yeah. Um, I don't need all this hype and hoopla about free workouts and stuff like that. I yeah. just feel like it, I've done it before and I tried it and it just kind of works for a week and then it just stops. So I'm just yeah. like, caffeine pills, you get 100 cups of coffee for five bucks. I'm good. <laughs> then I, do, um, I just recently started taking um, joint medication. Um, like, uh, glucosamine and MSM and take a combination of all that stuff because okay. you guys aren't 30 yet, right? No, not yet. Yeah. <laughs> when did you start hitting 30, man? <laughs> so I started feeling, I started taking that and it's, it's been helping me out, especially with my, my knees, you know, helping me out. Um, that's all I take. I don't, I don't focus too much on the supplements. Um, I used to be a big supplement whore back when I was, you know, bodybuilding and before then I would you know, spend hundred dollars a month and get you know everything I do and creative and, and on the market and I'm just like all right well now I'm just gonna cut everything back I do take protein powder <laughs> once in a while I have it um but with the diet I really don't need it that much so right. I, I kind of focus on getting all my nutrition through solid food kind of helps me yeah. work as well so that makes sense yeah, so uh, outside of the compound movements, what are your what are your favorite accessory movements, uh, whether for you know squat or bench or deadlift? All right, so for squat, um, I'm a big advocate for high bar squats. I fucking hate front bar squats. <laughs> I, I can't hold a bar. I can't do yeah. that whole, whole thing. Where yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> up, up this nut, um, flexible enough. So I do high bar squats to try to get the same effort. I'm just on the top of my my quads. Um, I do for bench, I have this, um, this rope, um, essentially I bought a piece of rope from like Home Depot and I put it into like two loops and, um, essentially it works both your grip and your, your tricep at the same time. So you have to focus on squeezing while actually, um, doing an extension. Okay. Um, so it kind of does a dual effort. The same thing as, you know, if you actually were a bench person that, that shit kicked my ass the first time I did it, and I've been trying to get up there as, as hard as possible, but I love tricep extensions. Um, I actually like love to do bicep curls, too, because yeah. the bigger your arm, the more, you know, you have that uh, that cushion there, you know, to go with the deep. But um, I actually injured my forearm, too, recently, and I have no idea how I did it, but I can't Weird. tweak well, and so I've been, I had to tweak my forearm on bench a little bit to so keep my wrist straighter. I've been crank them back a little bit so I'm not too happy with that but it's another work in progress for uh for sumos for my deadlifts i um i do high box stuff um i kind of started showing my instagram videos the um the the louis simmons pulls where you kind of sit on a chair you sit back and come back up yeah right I think that motion has been killer for me to actually kind of get my mind focused on how i actually should be pulling um but on top of that, I do some some hamstring work. Um, I, I use the vagina machine a lot, that half <laughs> adduction thing. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I love using that. Yeah, I mean, uh, on top of my cables, I makes my vagina strong. <laughs> yeah. but, um, I I kind of focus a lot of the accessory stuff on bench. So I do I do some some lower back work like a reverse leg deadlifts and stuff like that. Um, I do f- for bench. Floor presses, one of my staples. I started using a lot more uh, dumbbells, um, just kind of build an overall chest um, stronger. Um, but yeah, I mean that's kind of narrows it down. Um, accessory work, I I wish I had more time for it. So I lift yeah. in the morning, so by the time I get to the gym, I have like an hour. So about 45 minutes of that goes towards the compound movement, make sure I can at least get through my main lifts. So I actually got to start focusing on that. Um, plus the mobility work too, man. So I'm telling oh, yeah. you, the pills are great, but getting old and getting unflexible is not, it's not great. <laughs> What's uh, your favorite lift of the three? Squats. Yeah. And um, I'm a squatter. Um, I I never was a big bencher. Um, I usually do a lot of dumbbell work before I went into powerlifting. So it, it's benching sucks for me. So I got to get that up. And then deadlifts. I've been squatting since I was like 15. So squatting just not nice. natural. Having the, the weight on my shoulder, it just it, it feels like home to me. But when it comes to deadlift and getting the, the weight off the floor, I'm like, why the fuck do people like this? Thing? Yeah, <laughs> like, fuck I get yeah. Like, <laughs> I think heavy, but um, yeah, it's, I'm definitely squats all the way. 
Yeah, sumo is the worst. Feels like it takes forever to break that weight off the floor. Like, that's what the one good thing about videotaping myself I found is at least it doesn't look quite as slow on film, even though it feels like ten years in your head. Um, but yeah, um, what kind of tips and cues have worked for you? For kind of looking at each lift that like helped you the most. Okay. Um, okay, for squats, um, the biggest thing for me was tightness and I think that's kind of where I started failing at some of my squats um, the making sure you have uh, a push out stomach not just full of air but making sure that you're, you're actually flexing your stomach out right. uh, if you understand where if you're, you're coming forward a little bit on the squat you have that that cushion as your center point of gravity or your center point of your, your body um, and coming down there um, I don't, I don't keep like a tight um, grip on my squats. I actually go all the way out to, to the end of the bar. Right. Um, I just don't have the flexibility to do that. So I have to remind myself that as soon as I get that, as soon as I'm starting to get underneath the bar, I kind of get myself get everything tight up top, and then get the air out. Um, especially you, a lot of people forget too is that when you unrack the weight. You have to unrack it as if you were actually doing a squat because a lot of people, I, like I've seen it myself, people will get underneath, un unrack it, and then all of a sudden they get injured because right. you know or they just like lose focus. They don't realize how heavy the weight it can actually be. Um, like, like I've, I've done, I've sat there and held six hundred, and and it get gets heavy. But if you don't do it properly, as if the lift off is just as important as the squat. I think that's what a lot of people, they lose their focus a little bit there. Um, so those are the, that was a cue for squats. I think that's yeah. probably the thing that was the lift off um, and, and walking out. I The guy I'm training now, I actually have to teach him to slow down. Um, as soon as he unracks the weights, he tries to get in the position as quick as possible. I'm like, slow down, let the weight settle, take yeah. your necessary steps back, you know, don't rush it. Because once if you go a little too fast, you know that will drop, or you just won't get set. You know you'll have to readjust. So get used to, to walking out and lifting off. And um, I love doing those um, those on racks where you just hold it for thirty seconds and you see your entire body shake like you're in an earthquake. Love that. That's yeah. really good. <laughs> Bench press. Um, I'm probably the last person on earth that actually has for cues. Um, I'm still trying to adjust my form and figure out. Um, I've been going out and sliding my hands out a little bit, trying to get closer to rings. Um, for me, my biggest cue was getting my, my shoulder blade puck under. Yeah. Um, as soon as I get set up, you know, I, I, I do my hands first. And once my hands are settled, they don't ever move. And then I readjust my upper back. I dig into that bench, you know, as best as I can. And then get my ass down on the bench. And then once I set up, I redig my shoulder, my shoulder blades in. And I actually kind of um, changed the way I unrack the, the bar doing it because I'm a little more like locked in this way because of my shoulder blades. I used to be all the way out here and then I had to readjust. So getting that set up and getting your shoulder blades tucked into your into your ass and then um, just getting that, just getting big into the bench. Um, the other cue I have to remember with or uh, um, is the, the leg drive. Yeah. Um, big, I keep forgetting the leg drive. I keep forgetting I have legs on the bench. So um, I started watching videos from like Harris Pato and yeah, um, nice. what he says about the bench. And he says, um, as soon as you unrack the weight, you know, put 50% of your leg drive into unracking the weight and holding the bar there. And as you know, the closer it comes down, your leg drive is 60, 70, 80, 90. Right. And once you get to your the hole, you know, drive through. So my leg drive is probably one of my um, worst key things to remember, but uh, yeah. you know, work on it, get those thousand reps in. You know, it might, it might change eventually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, deadlifts. Um, um, see, I've just changed my form recently too on that as well. So before, when I was doing deadlifts, my I was always sumo. I would always take you know and breathe my pull my gut out and push it against the belt. Um, and I would you know do this exaggerate movement where I you know throw my arms up in the air and lock my back in and it just I, coming back to it, it kind of looked ridiculous so um, what I started doing now is just making sure my hands are locked in um, and making sure that your whatever hand is underhand is a half inch out because of the way just naturally your arm comes out you know against your body just making sure that arm is out a little bit more um, and then um, locking the back in taking that breath of air in um, I started following and watching 
watching Chris Duffin a little bit more with his sumo squats. Nice, yeah. Or, um, or sumo pulls. That man is amazing. Uh, yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> so I started watching his form, and um, again, it's just set up. Getting, getting your feet, you know, exactly where it needs to be in the bar, and then um, that one cue with the, the underhand going out a little bit further on the bar, that was kind of a nice touch. Um, I didn't learn that for like a year. But my hands were always really close in. Yeah, I haven't heard of that till now, actually. That's really interesting. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, just the way that your body comes out. So, And women have to go out even further, obviously. Oh, yeah, right. Um, and then keeping your back locked up. And um, I actually used to have to curve my back a little bit. So my, instead of my back being straight, my back would curve a little bit to kind of keep my chest up. Um, and I did that same thing on squats, too. So what I was trying to do is actually keep a more straighter spine. And... Uh, try to keep everything in one line and keep my back locked up that, that, that way. And I, I think I've been seeing a little more improvement that way. Um, instead of trying to curve, you know, um, bar paths have been improving a little bit too with the, the straight line too. Yeah, cool. So uh, we did talk about your meats, so, but what are your, uh, we asked Brett the same question, what's your iron cred? What are your best uh, meat and uh, gym lifts? <laughs> <laughs> um, so in the gym my best squat was 625 um, my best yeah. bench was 385 for gym yeah and my best sumo pole was uh, I think it was 580 or 585 for the gym so on the meets, on the meat platform, they're not too much different. Uh, well, the squat is. My best squat was 585. Mm -hmm. um, the best bench was 355. And then my best sumo pool is 580. So nice. Yeah, I mean, I try to That's keep. Solid. I try to train as if you know. It's kind of my mentality. You know, if you, um, especially with benching, I actually start wearing a belt now because when I get yeah. to the meet, and you guys have done it too, like. You get done squats and your back is just taxed. And oh, an yeah. hour where you got to go bench as hard as you can. I'm trying to get that form. You know, try to scrump. You know, crunch up like a like a big U. You know, and you put all that pressure in your lower back. So I started wearing my belt again. So I train as if um, I just got to actually get a little more energy. <laughs> and yeah. Not, you know, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches aren't cutting anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Have you found like? any like sort of mental barriers with hitting weights like I found like hitting like four plates five plates even like six plates it's kind of like a mental thing almost like how have you worked through those and like dealt with that I guess or have you had issues with that no mental is I'm, I'm very hard on myself so mental is a big part of, of powerlifting that's a good question um, when it comes to the weights I um, especially the gym I try not to focus on it um, yeah. I know in the gym it's it's a training environment, so if I don't hit it, I don't hit it. You know, at least I'm right. able to unrack it or break the floor or, you know, break the hole a little bit on the bench and, and get, you know, at least find some positive in it. Um, at least initially with the first time of going around, like the first time you ever hit four plates on the bench or, you know, six plates on the, on the squat. Um, just knowing that you tried it once and you know where you're at with it. Um, um, I used to be very um, hype when I get to a, to a lift. Like I, I, I squat with you before, um, I would get to the bar and I was like shaking, like I was Ultimate Warrior, and then trying to get my head around it and wrap around it. And I actually read an article that you shouldn't do that because at the time of the meet, you're going to need that energy and that focus. If you put that into the time of the meet instead of the time, every time you get to the gym. You're actually going to probably increase your adrenaline levels by doing it. So I get to, when I get to the bar, um, I kind of just focus on technique and, and getting everything I need to do. And it's just mechanical. So um, if I'm pulling, like I'll put, I make sure that my my caps are on the ring. Um, I'll make sure that I, I get that my hands set up correctly. Right. And um, I'll do. I'll make sure I get you know everything tight and slack out of the bar. Get through all my mechanism, mechanism, mechanism. But I, I feel that if I do that constantly, you know, my thousand reps and constant hitting and hitting and hitting, and by the time the meat comes, then I got all that down pat. And then I can add the adrenaline and the and the the, um, the experience, the atmosphere to that lift. 
Right. Um, and I think I could just I would nail, nail out of the park. Yeah. So, so for the mental game, I try not to, to focus on it. I try just to get down the technique and the mechanics. And um, if I hit it, if I hit it, I don't, I don't. And then I try to hit every rep in, in right. you know, for before I meet. Um, sometimes it works. Most of the time it doesn't. <laughs> so, um, the closer you get to those goals, it just damn. Yeah. I pick this number. <laughs> but um, so that's why I try to focus on. You know, like I've. I try to break six place on a sumo deadlift forever, and it, I can do it, you know, um, from like a one block. But then I get to the floor, it's like, fuck, man, it's, it was so much easier two inches above. Why can't I just do it? Yeah, now? yeah, seriously. Yeah. Um, what's kind of your, I guess, powerlifting goals for the next one to five years? Are you gonna kind of stay your same weight class and just increase weights, or what's your goal? Yeah, so. Um, like my goal for this year was to definitely break 1600. Um, I, that was my goal for last year, and then the injuries came about. So, um, getting to 1600 range for this year, um, I feel like I'm on path to do that a lot better um, this time around. Taking all, you know, the second half of last year off, and then basically just kind of just going through um, a little bit of motions, getting my accessories down. I feel like I could hit that. 1650, 1675 mark by the end of the year. Nice. Um, within five years, I'm 40 by then. <laughs> so, um, try, uh, basically, um, I think by the time the 40 mark comes around, I think I can be pretty, probably one of the better, um, is that even still a sub master? Is that even masters in that by that point? I think it's a master category, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think I can be one of the better masters in the country. I mean, I don't see myself stopping with power looking anytime soon, you know. Um, everybody has injuries. Everybody has has things we got to deal with. But honestly, I'm I plan on pushing. I plan on going. I plan on seeing how far I can take this. Yeah, man. I know. I say I'm I'm old as fuck right now, but you know, my old as fuck status um, is is good because I didn't actually start powerlifting when I was 21. So I don't have you know 15, 16 years of, of beat down on my body. Um, so I can actually say. I'll get two years of beat down. Maybe I can keep up, and by the time yep. I'm 50, I can complain about it a little more. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but um, that's my goal in these five years, man. I, I want to actually um, get this strong as fuck. Stay at yeah, 275. Man. I think I'm, I'm good at 275. Um, just add more more muscle to my frame. Um, get my numbers up. I think by the time I get to 40, I think I can still be one of the most competitive guys in the country, and uh, start getting. Um, some, uh, some numbers and some boards, man. Yeah, man, that's exciting. Powerlifting watch a little bit. There you go. <laughs> Talk about getting <clears throat> powerlifting, you get beat up pretty often, I think, myself, inclu- like, just after time after time of working out and doing, like, high reps. For, like, deload weeks, do you have those, like, scheduled in, or do you kind of just, like, listen to your body and see how you're feeling and then just take a week off, or, or what's your kind of, like, mindset for deload weeks? Deload, um... <clears throat> I, I kind of I do them sometimes. Usually, my first meets I did, I took just a complete week off. So I would train um, heavy as fuck as I could up until a week before the meet, and then that that week before the meet, I just took off like you're doing now. Um, I don't really, I never really focus on deload. So I tried it. Um, I tried it last May. I tried to actually add yeah. a deload week in there. Um, just cut everything in half, and I didn't like it. I didn't like. Um, Kind of just not training all the way up until the end. I yeah. it's, it's I think it's fucked with me mentally, and I wanted to actually just get in there and just push and pull and, and just do everything I could as strong as possible, and then come to a complete halt. I can't. Okay, it's kind of the way I like doing things. I don't really like deep load training. I I, I, just, I I kind of focus on just getting there, making seeing my max lifts the week before the meet. That way, I can at least get my mind wrapped around um, knowing where I can aim and my openers for yeah. the meet. Um, so, and so I don't really deload, I, I'm probably gonna get back to not doing that. I kind of just take it all the way to the end, yeah. um, and then take that last week off and just, you know, sit on the couch and try to get my mind wrapped around getting, you know, on that, that platform and just fucking that bar up the best I yeah. can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. That's awesome. Um, breaking through plateaus, do you have, a, have you hit plateaus in the past? And if so, like how kind of you've worked through those? Plateaus suck, man. Like, yeah, the fucking worst. <laughs> um, they they come up very often. Like I said, I, 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 
I've been trying to get that fucking 400 on bench. I've been yeah. trying to get, you know, 600 on, on poles. Um, the best way to do get through a plateau for me is just starting over um, and, and coming back down a little bit, um, finding what works, getting some more volume in. Like if like I'm, I'm if I'm stuck at five eighty five six plates and I just can't nail it, I'll come back down to five hundred and start working on the form or start getting stronger again. Maybe adding if I can hit five hundred five, maybe I can add two more reps in there and see what I can do with that. And just resetting myself. Um, and then doing some accessory work too, getting some, if I know where I'm weak at, like if it's breaking the floor, I'll start, I'll just stop pulling um, to, uh, you know, from the floor altogether. I might do some deficit stuff or with locking out, I'll just add more you know, block work in there yeah. and uh, just keep pushing it out. And then I'll just stay away from that or I'll stay away from bench for a while and I'll just do accessory work um, until I feel like. Like, I'm blown past all the sex work and it's pointless to me. I'll get back on the bench. Or that feeling where I just want to get back on the bench because yeah. I know I'm going to fucking wait up again. You know? So, that's how, that's what I'm working on. That's why, you know, the buddy of mine tell me he, he hits these plateaus. I'm like, all right, just back off a little bit. You know, reset yourself. Get back to a lighter weight. You know, work on your technique and then start climbing back up again. Um, and that's kind of how I've broken through, you know, some stuff. My first, my first meet, I was playing for... A 500 deadlift, and the week before I hit 525. So I was like, all right, well, wow. I, mean, I gotta, I gotta redo this again. So, but um, yeah, I'm gonna tell myself. That's cool, man. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, start back over and move from there. Um, I know you said you when you're lifting, you try to get too hyped up and you try to more focus on your technique and stuff. Do you ever listen to like any type of certain music to get you pumped up, or when you're in the gym, or? Um, that's also. <laughs> I'm, I'm a weird bird when it comes to that. Um, I, I, I listen to rock. I try to find some, yeah. some rock stuff um, and some, I don't want to say classical rock. I don't want to say you know, insult anybody that's older than me, but, you know, um, I try to find songs that nobody's heard of. Um, well, almost nobody's heard of. Like, my probably my favorite song right now is um, uh, How Do You Like Me Now by The Heavy. Um, okay. And that song is everywhere now. But you know, I try to find songs that kind of just kind of that have that strong bass and strong beat. Yeah. And sometimes I just I just feel like like I'm in a good mood and I just want to move. So like I have uh, Stevie Wonder Superstition on my playlist. Like I'll have uh, um, I have more one plug making trainer. <laughs> like it's it's nice. weird, weird for me. But when it comes down to like getting in there and getting, getting solid, like I, I listen to a lot something with heavy bass and heavy beats and um, it's not so much the lyrics as long as I can I can feel the thump in my head. Yeah. That's that's what I need to hear. You know. But uh, it's mostly rock. A little bit of I used to do a little, a lot of um, Motown, and then you know I lost the whole playlist and I got real sad. But <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, that's that's basically it. So cool. Got anything else? Well, I think that's most of our questions. Maybe we'll end off on uh, who you think's going to win the Super Bowl uh, next weekend. Panthers, man. It's all about the Panthers. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I have to agree. Fun. At his time, and I hope you guys are Broncos fans, but I just can't see Manny doing it again. I don't want to do it. <laughs> Cam, go Panthers. Yeah, man, cool. Right All right, well, thanks for your time, dude. It was nice to finally uh, kind of meet you over at least somewhat face to face. Um, yeah, I guess enjoy the rest of your weekend, man. Yeah, man, thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Cool, thanks, man. See you later. Take care. <laughs> All right, and that's the end of the podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed it, found it informative. Uh, we'll be back with another podcast next week, along with some videos, hopefully. Yeah, check us out again on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Periscope, One Set. Uh, I think, yeah, I think that's everything. Pretty much everything, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, stay tuned, guys. We'll be putting out a lot more videos like this. Peace. In my shows, everybody put their hands up like a smart kid in chemistry class. Goddamn, it's too easy. I ain't stopping no other option presented. Authentic with all these written. No, really, this shit is simple.